Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. In the scope of Bojack Horseman's life, there were few people as important or influential as Herb Kazaz. The man basically gave Bojack his big break, his opportunity for fame and success. Whether or not that was a good thing is definitely debatable, but what isn't debatable is that Herb was a good guy who was trying to do right by his friend. Herb's story is another sad one in the scheme of Bojack Horseman, and though he had a good life and accomplished a lot, he also went through some major hardships. So today, let's explore the complete timeline of Herb Kazaz. But before we get started, let's talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your online presence, run your business, or make a personal website. It is seriously so user-friendly. I threw this cool page together pretty quickly, it was easy to use, and there are so many different customization options. My website looks professional and matches the aesthetic of my brand and YouTube channel, highlighting some of my favorite video essays I've worked on, as well as some of the recent productions I've worked on professionally, complete with links to my work and contact info. I seriously can't express how easy Squarespace is to use. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to push the website public, use my link squarespace.com slash johnny2cellos to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Herb Kazaz was born in 1961. Not much is known about his early life, but by the 1980s, he was living in Los Angeles and performing as a stand-up comedian while pursuing a writing career. In 1985, at the Laugh Shack, Herb caught the act of a young comedian named Bojack Horseman. Bojack was struggling on stage and, well, Herb heckled him. Did you get that? Keep this up and the only thing we're gonna get is our money back! <laughs> After the set, Herb struck up a conversation with Bojack, offering to buy him a drink, which Get cancer! jerkwad did not go great at first but after giving him some advice the pair actually became very close friends they worked at a bar together and performed in their free time while in los angeles herb also began dating a deer named charlotte moore and she herb and bojack became a pretty tight-knit friend trio in 1986 herb performed a set at the laugh shack in front of a handful of television executives making a good impression on them he was then invited to an industry party and brought bojack and charlotte along for the ride at the industry party herb approaches the tv executives and pitches them a sitcom of his own creation at the same time, Charlotte makes plans to move to Maine, thinking that she and Herb are not going to work out. I don't think I'm the person Herb's looking for. Shortly after this, Herb meets Bojack at the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. He gives Bojack a telescope and tells him to look out at Los Angeles. And then he gives him some major life-changing news. ABC has bought his sitcom horsing around, and Herb pitched Bojack as the star of the show. If they want my show, then that horse is gonna be BJ goddamn Horseman! Bojack happily accepts and the two celebrate, and Herb kisses Bojack in their celebration, though he claims he just got caught up in the moment. Shortly after this, Bojack and Herb find themselves outside the back of the Laugh Shack. Bojack asks if ABC is going to let him star in Horsin' Around, and Herb assures him that they will. They just have to go through the formality of filming a screen test. Herb proceeds to outline Bojack in whiteout on the back of the Laugh Shack, telling him that no matter what happens, his image will live on forever. But this way, you'll always be immortalized and undisturbed in Hollywood forever. Herb ends up coaching and directing Bojack through his screen test for Horsin' Around and genuinely helps him deliver a great performance. Yeah, you, you, you think we got it? Buckle up, buddy. Your life is about to start. <laughs> Thanks to this performance, Bojack lands the lead role in Herb's sitcom. In 1987, they shoot the pilot for Horsin' Around, a show about a horse who adopts three sibling orphans. The orphans are played by Joelle Clark, Bradley Hitler Smith, and Sarah Lynn. After the pilot shoot, Herb rallies the cast and tells them to take care of each other. No matter what, we're going to stick together. Herb then takes Bojack up to the roof of the TV studio, and the two of them drink soda together in the water tank, celebrating their accomplishment. Bojack asks Herb if he's worried that everything is going to change. And no, I'm not scared, BJ. The future is bright. Just look at it. Though Horsin' Around was a huge success, Herb and Bojack's relationship became rocky over its production. They were regularly fighting about the quality of the writing on the show. In the early 1990s, Herb was caught having sexual relations with another man in a public place. He was arrested for public indecency, and it became a major scandal due to the family-focused nature of Horsin' Around. She. Herb begged Bojack to have his back with the network during the scandal, and Bojack agreed. You know what? You can count on me, Herb. 
However, after a conversation with network executive Angela Diaz, Bojack is persuaded to stay on the show, going back on his promise to Herb. Herb was fired from Horse and Around and replaced with TV veteran Danny Bananas. Bojack never reached out to Herb after this happened. Throughout the final seasons of Horse and Around, Herb still kept in touch with the other members of the cast and would speak on the phone with Joelle Clark even while she was on set. He tried to maintain the cast's bond even from afar. Hey, be nicer to Sarah Lynn, will ya? You two are family. After his career in television, Herb pursued many philanthropic endeavors, including starting a charity. He even met President Bill Clinton. But in the 2000s, Herb was diagnosed with rectal cancer. At some point, he began to write a book. In 2014, Herb's cancer was getting worse. He had dinner with Sarah Lynn and asked her to make sure that his book got published. Though she was not sober at the time, so she did not remember to do this. Later in 2014, Herb gets a message from Bojack, the first contact he's made in 20 years. Bojack wants to meet up and talk knowing he might not get another chance. Herb calls Bojack back, but does not pull punches. He really tears into him and tells him to come see him in Malibu if he really needs to. You got something to say to me? You come out to Malibu and say it to my face. I'll be alive tomorrow. Bojack follows through and goes to Malibu with Diane to see Herb for the first time in 20 years. Herb immediately makes fun of Bojack in a playful way and then invites them in. Over the course of the day, Bojack and Herb catch up, and things are cordial. They even bond over some shared frustrations and make jokes together. Every article I read now is juice this and juice that. You know why? Juice controls the media. Hey <laughs> After a day of catching up, Herb says he's tired and tries to send Bojack and Diane off so he can rest. But before leaving, Bojack goes into Herb's room and attempts to apologize for never contacting him after horsing around. Herb listens to Bojack's apology and firmly proclaims that he does not forgive him, much to Bojack's confusion. Herb explains that he doesn't owe Bojack closure or a happy ending and that he never cared about the show horsing around. But what I needed then was a friend and you abandoned me, and I will never forgive you for that. He then tells Bojack to get out of his house. On the way out, Bojack notices the telescope from when Horsin' Around was greenlit, but Herb emerges to tell him to give it back. The two end up fighting over the telescope until Bojack leaves. This would be the last time Herb ever saw Bojack Horseman. In 2015, miraculously, Herb actually beats his cancer. Unfortunately, while driving home from the hospital, his car brakes gave out. He crashed into a truck, but again, miraculously, survived the crash. Double, unfortunately, it was a peanut truck, and Herb was deathly allergic to peanuts. The peanuts killed him instantly. Here are some excerpts from his final tweets. Oh no, I think I'm gonna hit that truck. Hashtag, hopefully it isn't full of peanuts. Hashtag, oh no, it was full of peanuts. Herb's funeral was not huge, but had some notable attendees, including the entire cast of Horsin' Around and Herb's good friend, Henry Winkler, who gave the eulogy. Herb's one posthumous wish was what he asked Sarah Lynn for back in 2014. He wanted to make sure that his manuscript was published. Herb's gold, as he called it. Unfortunately, as it turned out, the manuscript was not very good. But also hungry dot 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 for life. You literally wrote out dot dot dot. Herb's friends decided that what was best for his legacy was that the manuscript not be published. For some reason, Herb's ashes were then given to Bojack Horseman. To honor his legacy, Bojack donates to an orphanage and names it after Herb, leaving his urn there. Though there was a mistake on the plaque reading Jerb instead of Herb. You know, Herb would probably think that this is pretty funny that you couldn't even get this right. And this concludes the story of Herb Kazaz, comedian, writer, showrunner, philanthropist, Therapist and friend. Though his life was cut short in more ways than one, Herb remained optimistic and always pushed forward. He still harbored resentment and made tough decisions like choosing not to forgive Bojack, but he didn't let it consume him. He led a life that many can only hope to. So how would you describe your life, Herb? It's a catastrophe. And that is the complete timeline of Herb Kazaz. I know this is another kind of sad side character, but I needed to do a shorter one because that Todd timeline was a beast. So enjoy the short ones while you can. The next ones are gonna be monsters again. Make sure to comment below which timeline you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Johnny! Two challenge.